Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to fix the double clicking of Logitech G Pro X Superlight which started recently on my white color GPX where I switches on my magenta slash pink color Logitech G Pro X Superlight gaming mouse are still working perfectly. I will also try to fix the scroll wheel red link where I can hear the sound of scroll wheel is very different on my white GPX against the pink color GPX. First let's start with accessories we are going to need. I'm expecting that PTFE feet at the bottom of Logitech G Pro X Superlight will be destroyed while being removed from the mouse and for that I have bought fairly cheap new skates from eSports Tiger and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you are interested to see installation of Superglide mouse skates in Miami Color which have been designed in cooperation from Nacho Customs who is well known in gaming mice community for his arts work on gaming peripherals. And if you know how to do soldering then you can buy exactly the same switches as they are installed by default and that is Omron 10 million clicks switches. Or you can improve the mouse by soldering in Cal GM2 switches with blue button and 20 million clicks lifetime. Or you can get full set of switches which includes Omron series switches such as lighter 5 million clicks then Omron 20 million clicks and Omron 50 million clicks or white point 20m, blue point 50m and powder point 80m which are all from Huano Blue Shell series switches. And you can nicely recognize them by color of the button. We also have included TTC Gold series switches such as ATM, 60M and 30M switches and Cal GM Translucent Black ATM, GM4 All Red 60M and All Black 5M switches. However, the most easiest way without soldering is to get the full module including the TTC Yellow Core Encoder for scroll wheel and Cal GM8 micro switches, which seems to be one of the best mechanical switches on gaming mice. The benefit of such module is that the switches are already pre-soldered and you can choose from variety switches as well, depends on your preference of clicks feeling. Last option is to get the hot swap module with TTC yellow core encoder for scroll wheel which is again already soldered into the board and with sockets for switch pins which are pre-soldered as well. Benefit of this hot swap module is that you can just plug in the micro switch without the soldering. Let me try to plug in the Omron 10M switch and you can see that I have to apply force to install the switch properly into the pre-soldered sockets. This hot swap board can be used to test variety of switches to find the best one for your clicks technique and to improve your click speed. This board is a little bit thin so I have to be careful to do not damage it. Removal of the switch from the board is a little bit harder but I would not expect to change the switches so often. Now let's start with the disassembly of the Logitech G Pro X Superlight and first I need to remove the PTFE feed. You can use any sharp tool, in my case I'm using these tweezers to remove the big PTFE foot from the front side of the mouse as well as the thinner PTFE foot from rear side at the bottom of the mouse. Just be careful to do not damage it in case you want to reuse them. Now we have uncovered three screws at the front part and three more screws at the rear part at the bottom of the mouse. These are very thin Phillips screws so make sure you have very small Phillips screwdriver prepared. Let me speed up the video while I'm unscrewing the three screws in front where was installed bigger PTFE foot and then another three screws at the rear part where thinner PTFE foot was installed. And now nothing holds the base and top shell and I can open the Logitech G Pro X Superlight gaming mouse to discover two connectors I need to take care of. First is connecting the main board with switches board and second is connecting the battery to the main board. I will not be disassembling the main board and I can just remove the battery by applying a little bit of the force to loosen up the glue on the battery. Now when the battery is removed from the top shell cover of the Logitech G Pro X Superlight mouse, I can just free up the clip on the main board connector and slide out the ultra thin ribbon cable connecting the main board and the board with the switches. This is nicely separating the bottom base of the Logitech G Pro X Superlight from the top shell cover and we can continue with dismantling process. There are four screws which are holding the left and right buttons, so let me just unscrew it again with very thin Phillips screwdriver. These were the only screws holding the left and right buttons of the Logitech G Pro X Superlight on the top cover shell and I can dismantle them by applying a little bit of wobbling force and we can start exploring the board with the switches and scroll wheel encoder. 
There are another four screws which are holding the board and there is again the connector with the clip which is holding the ultra thin ribbon cable connecting this small board with the main board on the base of Logitech G Pro X Superlight. So let me just unclip the connector and I'm not going to remove the cable for now as it will slide out itself and I will be removing the switches board from the shell of the mouse. So let me loosen those four screws holding the switches board on the shell cover and I can slowly remove the switches board including the scroll wheel. There is very small metal torsion spring holding the right side of the scroll wheel so make sure you are not going to lose that one as we are going to need it when installing the upgraded board with new switches. Now we can remove the scroll wheel from the scroll wheel encoder by sliding it out and we can say goodbye to our old switches board with Omron 10M switches and with TTC white slash silver scroll wheel encoder. Now I could either replace the bad switch by desoldering it out and soldering in new one or I could use the hot swap board but I'm going to use the most convenient and fairly cheap option of the board with pre-installed switches. I have just plugged in the scroll wheel into the TTC gold encoder which seems to be somehow wobbly on first try so I'm looking into replacing this one in some of my next videos so make sure you stay tuned for that one. Now let me prepare the connector by opening up the clip holder. Again I'm using the tweezers which seems to be fairly handy while working with small components on the board of Logitech G Pro X Superlight mouse. Now I can place back the upgraded switches board into the top cover of the Logitech G Pro X Superlight gaming mouse and I can insert the ultra thin ribbon cable into the opened connector on the switches board. This cable is the only connection between the switches board and main board so make sure it fits properly. Then I can again use the tweezers to lock the ultra thin ribbon cable into the connector which will ensure the cable will not fall out. Removing and placing back the tension spring properly above the right side of the scroll wheel is one of the most difficult part of this assembly. As the tension spring can jump out and you can lose it forever. I've been trying few times until I finally managed to properly install it and this is how it should look like when the tension spring properly holds the right side of the scroll wheel. And only test of scrolling the scroll wheel can ensure us it is properly installed. Now finally we can tighten up the switches board with all four screws by screwing them in with small Phillips screwdriver. Let's make sure you tighten it up properly to avoid unnecessary increase of the bounce time. Let's flip the top cover over and we can install both of the left and right buttons back to the shell cover. There are rails and holes for screws which is going to help you to install the buttons properly. You should hear small click sound when the button is seated well into the Logitech G Pro X Superlight shell cover. Again this is very important otherwise your buttons will be misaligned with switches or they will be wobbling more than what is in tolerance. I could hear both clicks of the left and right buttons when seated into the rails which is good sign. So let's start screwing another four small screws with Phillips screwdriver. Again the tightening up the screws is important here to avoid any wobbling of left and right buttons or make some negative impact on the debounce time. And these four screws together with six screws under the feet is the reason why I have chosen to replace the switches board with pre-installed board instead of hot swap board. Because every time I would want to change the switches I would have to peel off and destroy the gliders feet as well as unscrew 10 screws and then assemble it back and reinstall the new feet. Now let me plug in the ultra thin ribbon cable into the connector with the clip to connect the switches board with the main board. Very important is to lock the connector to ensure all contacts work properly. Now we can install back the battery. Fortunately there are no screws for that and the glue is still present on the battery so we can stick it to the same place where it was. This would also have to be dismantled when you would choose the hot swap board and you would decide to change the switches to different ones than you initially installed. Now we can assemble back the bottom base of the Logitech G Pro X Superlight gaming mouse and I can start screwing all six screws back. This bottom base can be actually customized to make the Logitech G Pro X Superlight lighter but that one might be in one of my next videos so make sure you stay tuned to do not miss it. Even though I'm the master of screwing the thin screws with thin Phillips screwdriver I'm speeding up the video to quickly move to the last part of the video which is about installing the PTFE feed. Before that I just quickly tested that all buttons are functional and none of the cable is preventing from clicks as well as scroll wheel is scrollable. Now the very important question is whether I can install the same PTFE feedback to make the double clicking fix even cheaper. 
As you can see, I have prepared these Sport Tiger gliders as well as custom Super Glide feet, which would be definitely better choice to install instead of used original PTFE feet, but let's give it a try. The back thin foot is now installed and I can install the front bigger foot. These original PTFE feet now have wrinkles and the adhesive on it is not so sticky, which is going to cause imperfection of the surface and it will cause the mouse not gliding so smooth as with new feet. As you can see, the originally used PTFE feet are not so easy to install. Let me use a little bit of the force to iron it out, which might straighten the feet a little bit, but still it will not be as good as with completely new Super Glide feet. And that would be it for the video, if you liked it make sure you hit the like button and stay tuned for my next video about gaming accessories. Cheers!